We're talking today about a topic that none of us really know much about, cyber insurance and uh, how it could potentially affect um, a, a, a enough people that um, insurers just don't want to do it anymore. And, and what's the possibility and, and how is that going to affect the US? And uh, yeah, so um, we do request anybody out there who knows more than us, which is basically everybody, to let us know in the comments. Please do um, get involved. Uh, anyway, enjoy the episode. Look, Peter, if knowing things yeah. was a prerequisite for doing this show. Yeah, no, we wouldn't. We, we wouldn't have a show. So. Andrew so we Tate thought you what Peter? Oh, wait, wait, it just the power pose. Mm. There you go. No, that's not it. So we thought it's this terrible. was <laughs> we thought this was an article <laughs> I submitted. Uh, it turns out it's not. However, I still think it's super interesting. So we're going to talk yeah. about it. Uh, if cyber is uninsurable, the United States has a major strategy problem. First of all, I hate that phrasing. If cyber is on if I don't know, yeah. that just sounds weird to me. Uh, cyber this, is so boomer calling anything cyber is uh, boomer just right yeah, off the bat yeah uh lawfaremedia.org uh article i do think it's so the insurance industry n knows risk right these guys make tons of money estimating what the risk is so that they can make their money from insurance and what this article my mm. my takeaway from this article is the insurance companies are basically saying if there's a true cyber disaster, <laughs> it's basically unrecoverable. Like think think about what it would cost if the entire internet shut down for two weeks, the losses. Yeah. And it reminded me of the of like AIG going bankrupt or nearly going bankrupt during the the collapse in what 2007. Um, the was it Sun Valley Bank? What was the bank that had in in Silicon in, Valley? Silicon Valley Bank that. The FDIC had to jump in and backstop all the deposits. So basically what they're saying is the government has to backstop this because if something happens, the insurance companies will go broke. But then why is the fucking government going to cover the loss? But this, I mean, right. I always thought that, okay, I don't know anything about insurance, I, I, but I always thought there were like limits. There are the limits. Like, so, yeah. so in, in, well, not only the amount, but feels a bit weird of an article because let's say i have cyber coverage as a company right like um so if my company gets ransomware and all of my customers sue me then i may be protected but like let's say that all of america gets cyberware yeah. um i am very sure. I'm not 100 percent sure because I don't. I, I'm not. I don't. I'm not reading these terms, but I am fairly certain that there are terms in place that the insurance providers have written some clauses that say that if something catastrophic like this happens, like we're like not going to protect you. Like sorry, like we ourselves are not protected anymore, right? Like there has to be some sort of fail safes in place where it's like, yeah, the the fail safe during the housing collapse was reinsurance and this was the problem that AIG had is AIG was reinsuring a bunch of people who had individual plans and when that came due there was just no way they could cover it so historically that's what they would do but the insurance companies are saying no there's just too much risk here we're not going to write these policies but people still need insurance theoretically yeah. so now they're saying well the government has to backstop it but th this is a, an insane solution the other thing is so uh, again, don't know much about insurance, but when I lived in Amsterdam and I bought myself a bike, a good bike, um, I wanted to get cycling insurance. And to, in order to get that of bike insurance, that I had to, um, you guys are probably going to think, oh, they, we do this with cars all the time, but I don't have a car, so I don't, I don't know if this is like a common thing. But I had to get a particular type of lock that was, it was quite expensive and it was like, it was acceptable to the insurance company that because I was protecting my my property well enough for them to go, OK, yeah, we'll insure you. So I think that there should be something similar with with uh, cyber insurance. Cyber Peter, security there literally insurance. is. So so you think we have to use uh, like chain locks to tie our cars to things? Is that what you envision right, here? Right into the smoke, right into the tire. Yeah, into the <laughs> oh, God, that's what I do every sad. day. You know what I'm trying um, to say? 
but Peter, <laughs> but Peter, they're they are in place, right? So let's say I'm a startup. I've got yeah. 100 employees and I'm fairly high risk. I'm in the fintech industry and I need cyber insurance. I have to prove to the insurance company before they even insure me, this I'm actually sure about, before they even insure me, I have to prove that I've taken steps well, to cyber secure show. my company. Cyber Sorry, mm-hmm. And if I can't prove that to this comp- to this insurance provider, they will not insure me or they'll insure me at like crazy costs. Right. But a quick way, I'm an established company, but a quick way to prove to them that we're competent is I have something like a SOC 2 certification, right? Or an ISO 27001 certification. So these security certs allow me. Quick. Well, after I have them. Yeah. Right, 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 right. <laughs> yeah. Obviously, this certificate and acquiring it is super expensive and time consuming and like yeah, company yeah. overhaul. But once I have those, I'm super low risk because I'm maintaining a very good standard in terms of um, security hygiene. But also, and like also, you pointed out earlier, it's l- relatively low risk for that one company. But if every company has a problem, then the insurance company is still screwed. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So there okay. has to be a clause in place because the it, we will have bigger problems as as a country or as a world we will have major issues if like everyone comes collecting at the same time exactly like what happened in 2008 and the those those insurance providers for the what were they called uh what were they insuring the mortgage um subprime mortgages the subprime mortgages right isn't that how it worked is that they were insuring it was actually fraud because they were like the they were insuring things that sh- uh, yeah, oh, what they were insuring like the lower classes yeah. when they shouldn't have been or something. I don't remember exactly the, how it worked. Like the credit default swaps were involved. Something like that. that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh my god. I need to watch Look at us throwing around right. financial terminology. I gotta I gotta watch the big short again so I can confidently yeah. throw around these terms. If anybody can explain this to us, please do in the comments below or yeah. on Discord. We either we'll yeah. accept either. But if anybody yeah, understands yeah. this. We're open to being taught. Very happy to to be to be learned. So I've got a, I've got a question. Um, are there any? Yeah. Are there any? Oh, sorry, John. Have I interrupted <laughs> you? No, go ahead. I have a question. Um, we love you. Now, like and comment immediately. Stop. Pause the video. We'll wait. People can okay, comment thanks. and watch at the same time. Mm, I don't know. We want it, it to helps be our watch time. time. We don't want to risk people not watching because we got to get yeah, monetized. Yeah, yeah. Make sure you press play. Yeah. yeah, yeah. In fact, play just this, leave it running the in the background. That actually would yeah, be that was, yeah, at half helpful. speed. Yeah. That'll increase yeah. the the watch time. I wonder if that counts. That probably doesn't count. Really half appreciate speed. it. Shoot Double question. speed could be interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Are there any parallels in real life, or is this a new phenomenon? I mean, maybe like nuclear bomb insurance, nuclear war insurance. No, that's sort of is that act of God. It's pretty um, sure that's not an act of God. I am fairly certain there is war insurance. Okay, so I then I, what? Something that could affect so many people that paying out would be impossible. Is there anything else? Well, we saw that with the financial collapse in two thousand seven. But more recently, um, insurance companies are pulling out of Florida because of the cost, and the and the, the risk is so high. The cost of insurance is so high. Uh, insurance companies are Life pulling insurance. out of Florida. It's property insurance. Property insurance. Property uh, insurance because it's so stormy and fucked up in Florida yeah. that houses get ruined all the time. What, so the reason homes are so cheap in Florida is because insurance is insane. It can get up to like a thousand or two a month. It's like right. crazy prices. How much do you, you insure a house some, for? Like three hundred thousand. How much does it cost to insure something that you can almost guarantee is going to be destroyed? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It's a gamble. So. Um, and if it's not destroyed by a storm, it's destroyed by the salt in the air. And then if this it's not is, destroyed by the salt or in by the air, woke right. Disney, but or by <laughs> Disney, um, this, this seems like a different problem, though. That's just something that's likely to go wrong, not like a scale issue. Where well, of course, it is a scale issue. One bad storm can take out a whole city. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No. Fair enough. Yeah. If it's the same insurance. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. Yeah. I have a friend who's in in cyber insurance, and I don't have to ask him about this. Yeah, but I mean, it is, yeah. it is kind of the about, same like, thing the as the auditing that. part. It it is kind of the same thing as the housing collapse because they were insured against individual losses. They weren't insured against the entire housing market collapsing in a way right. that would f- affect right. every insurer on the planet. 
so but in that case i, I it feels like people didn't really see that coming or maybe some people did see it coming but but a lot of people it wasn't like a predicted to happen saw it coming. Well, well that's a, what they're saying here is attack. they do I see can... it coming and they know they're fucked so they're not they're they're going to get out yeah so that's the difference that's that's i was wondering if there was anything else that was like entirely possible to happen that is something that insurers won't insure against because of its like and i suppose the the well the if we had up. that but if we that's a really tough question peter because if we had that answer mm -hmm. if us three had that answer we would be super rich <laughs> no, no seriously because well, you could sell that information to a, a that basically the highest bidder but there's like, a lot of things insurance yeah. companies won't insure against yeah but peter is saying like an undiscovered like no, what is actually, I was else? thinking uh, it was more. Oh, like, you're thinking like in the past tense, yeah. Or, or, or uh, currently, like I'm sorry, we're not going to show you again for that because it's too likely or something. Like the thing about uh, oh, we can't because we could possibly cover it and it affects too many people. The, uh, the, like, the possibility they don't like... of a global ransomware attack is something I can see happening. Um, yeah, you know, a particular vulnerability happens and it affects millions of people. Like billions of people possibly sure i think um, we need somebody from the audience to give us another example of that then yeah i'm running right, out cool. of well, uh, ideas educators let, us, let us know in the comments or come join discord